Hello and welcome to your thermal channel. This video is about adiabatic irreversible compression processes. While one can learn a lot from the study of reversible compression processes, in real life compressors operate irreversibly. Compressors will normally have one input and one output stream. When they operate at steady state, the flow rate of the input and output streams has to be the same. This is as much as we can learn from the mass balance. Let's turn our attention to the energy balance. For steady state operation, the time derivatives are equal to zero. The heat transfer rate is also equal to zero because the compression process is supposed to be adiabatic and we will neglect changes to the kinetic and potential energies. After canceling all these terms, what's left in the energy balance is shown in equation two. We can use it to calculate the compressor power. It's equal to the mass flow rate times the difference of the specific enthalpies of the output and input streams. Let's take a look at the entropy balance. Because of the steady state operation, the time derivative is equal to zero, and the term that depends on the heat transfer rate is also equal to zero because the process is adiabatic. After canceling these terms, we obtain equation four. It contains the entropies of the input and output streams and a term that accounts for the rate of entropy generation. Before we move on to adiabatic irreversible compressors, let's take a look at the case of adiabatic reversible compressors. In the reversible case, the rate of entropy generation is equal to zero. The consequence is that the entropies of the input and output streams are equal. Therefore, the compression process is isentropic. For irreversible compressors, it's usual to refer to their efficiencies. The efficiency of a compressor is the power of the adiabatic and reversible compressor divided by the power of the adiabatic and irreversible compressor. If we know the power of the reversible compressor and we know the efficiency, we can use equation six to estimate the power of the adiabatic irreversible compressor. Moving to the entropy balance, the entropy generation term is not equal to zero. The consequence is that the process is not isentropic. This figure out line is the method to calculate the compressor power. We assume that we know the temperature and pressure of the input stream, the pressure of the output stream, and the compressor efficiency. The first step to calculate the compressor power, assuming that this operation is adiabatic and reversible. We use this value in the compressor efficiency to calculate the power of the adiabatic and irreversible compressor. The final step is to calculate the temperature of the output stream. To do that, we use the energy balance. Let's apply this procedure to a specific example. The problem is about a continuous stream of 2 kg per second of nitrogen at 240 Kelvin and 0.1 MPa that enters an adiabatic compressor that operates at steady state with 80% efficiency. Nitrogen exits the compressor at 0.4 MPa. Neglecting changes to the kinetic and potential energies, use the pressure enthalpy diagram of nitrogen to find the compressor power and the temperature of the exit stream. The first step is to locate the point that corresponds to the condition of the input stream. It is at the intersection of the line of constant pressure equal to 0.1 MPa with the line of constant temperature equal to 240 Kelvin. It is the green dot on the diagram. Next, we locate the state that would be achieved if the compressor were adiabatic and reversible. This will be the pink dot on the diagram. We will initially place the pink dot on top of the green dot, that is, at the initial condition. We then take the pink dot along a trajectory of constant entropy, stopping at the pressure of 0.4 MPa. We need the specific enthalpies of the states represented by the green and pink dots to calculate the power of the adiabatic reversible compressor. The reading locations are identified by the small blue vertical bars on the enthalpy axis. Using these specific enthalpy values and the mass flow rate, we find that the power of the adiabatic reversible compressor is 220 kilowatt. We now divide this value by 0.8, which is the efficiency, and find out that the power of the adiabatic irreversible compressor is 275 kilowatt. Next, we use the energy balance. We know the compressor power, 
the mass flow rate and the specific enthalpy of the input stream. The only thing left is to calculate the specific enthalpy of the output stream. It's equal to 388 kilojoules per kilogram. We head back to the pressure enthalpy diagram and find the location that has this specific enthalpy at the pressure of 0.4 megapascal. This state is represented by the red dot on the diagram. This point is somewhat to the left from the 380 Kelvin isotherm. We will take 375 Kelvin as an approximation. Here is a summary of our solution. We found 275 kilowatt as the compressor power and 375 Kelvin as the temperature of the output stream. Finally, it's interesting to observe that the specific entropy of the state represented by the red dot is bigger than the specific entropy of the state represented by the pink dot. This difference in specific entropies times the mass flow rate gives the entropy generation rate. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you are not a subscriber of the Uthelmo channel yet, please take the opportunity to subscribe now. Also, follow our page on Facebook. My name is Marcelo Cassier. See you in the next video of the Othelmo channel.